Do you like crafting with these? If you do, let me show you how you can make all kinds of fun earring styles from your next empty soda can. Hi there, welcome to the Upcycled Design Lab. If this is your first time here, my name's Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials to give you ideas on ways to make and create more economically and ecologically. If you've seen some of my recent videos, you know that I'm very enamored with the aluminum cans and I've made a lot of different projects out of them. But of course, one of the funnest things that I've enjoyed making out of them is earrings. So I'm going to show you all of the different styles that I've made from these simple aluminum cans. But the first thing you need to know is how to break down the cans into these four parts. So we have flat sheets, the ring from the top of the can, the pull tab, and the bottom domed piece of the can. And I will link to a tutorial where I show you how I break down the aluminum cans into these four usable parts. Now for the earrings, I've used primarily the flattened sheets and the rings. There'll also be a link to three different ways to flatten the aluminum sheets and three different ways that you can take the top off of the ring so that you can get down to just this piece. So check out all those resources in the description box. This first set of earrings I'm going to show you are I'm using the flattened sheet and I went back and I used just the silver side of the aluminum and then I hand cut and hand embossed these different several different shapes. The unique thing about this is that they are also backed with aluminum. So there's a mount, I think I used mounting tape in between to sandwich the two pieces together. And then I used some dimensional paint, silver dimensional paint to fill in the edges so that you wouldn't see the gap between the metal and then also the edges are sealed up. So this is just one shape that I've made, sort of a teardrop shape. I uh, made sort of a square shape and again just sort of doodle hand embossed a design onto that. There's an oval shape. It's just very simple. And of course you can make any shape you want, big or small. These are just hand cut and hand embossed as I mentioned. This is sort of more of a diamond shape. And then I experimented a little bit with some paint. These I spray painted copper once they were finished. And on this pair, I was a little disappointed, but just to show you that you can also do some different painting techniques on them. This painting technique really kind of disguised the embossing that I did. So um, if you're going to do it, I think you'd want to do really deep and heavy embossing before you paint and sort of distract from the embossing if you decide to do any painting on this type of earring. And then another style of earrings that I've done, like I've mentioned, is using the hoop now or using the ring of the can. Now if you do that, you'll have to excuse my dogs. They are never going to be quiet for this. <laughs> um, if you do use the ring, you're going to get kind of a rough edge on one side and a more finished edge on the other. So if you use the ring, I would recommend sealing off that rough edge. And the way I've done it on this pair is by just wrapping some burgundy cording around them. On this pair, I was just kind of experimenting and I dipped the rings in some glue and then added some pink glitter and then hung little charms from the middle. So that's just another way that you can kind of cover up the edges. You can also cut the rings and tape them back together with some metal tape. And you can see maybe right here where I've taped this back together with the metal tape. And once you cut the ring, you can slide beads on. You just want to make sure that you have a design that kind of goes back in and covers up the tape once you've done that. And then I would recommend, I didn't do it on this pair, but like I said, I would recommend then going back and wrapping the rest of the raw 
metal so that you have the rough edge sealed. You can also really sand down and trim up the back edge so that it's not rough. It doesn't have as finished of a look still when you're done, but you can uh, get all those sharp edges off if you file it down or trim off those little pieces of metal. So you can use just the raw metal if you want to put a little extra work into finishing the back side of it. You can also bend the rings a little bit so that you have more of an oval shape. And that's what I did with these. I've also wrapped them with some silver cording, cut them at the bottom and retaped them to add these uh, beads that I made from aluminum cans. And then I uh, cut these little shapes on my Cricut cutting machine and hand embossed the little flowers. So you can see there's silver on one side and they have the print from the can on the other side. And they just sort of have a nice little dangly sound, I guess. So this is a way you can combine several different techniques. I used that same shape that I cut with my Cricut cutting machine to make these very simple earrings. And there's also a tutorial on how to cut aluminum cans with a Cricut cutting machine that I will link to in the description. And then these are just uh, have a little seed bead in the middle and again the embossing, but that's just a very simple earring style, very lightweight. And again, the print is showing on the back of the earring. You can also make kind of fun dangly styles with this, with any shape that you cut. So I did that with this pair. And again, you can see that the printed side is on the back. So you can emboss single layers of the aluminum or you can emboss, um, or you can use two-sided aluminum so that you have sort of a thicker earring like I showed you in the first set of earrings. But this is just another, very lightweight idea and obviously you can do many different shapes but if you've seen any of my videos you probably know that one of the funnest <clears throat> things that I've done with the aluminum sheets is to roll beads similar to paper beads and you just need a very inexpensive bead roller to do that I will link to that in the description as well this is one of my first attempts at rolled beads and making earrings and I used alcohol ink to color the beads and then I used some cording and the um, little what are they called clamshell clamshells and crimp beads to make these uh, designs these are made with what I'm calling a, my oblong bead there is also a bead rolling tutorial that I will link to and in that tutorial, you can get to all of my bead templates. So this is the, uh, like I said, the oblong bead, and these are all colored with the alcohol inks. These next few styles I just left with the silver finish on them. And so there's several different beads on this particular set of earrings. There's my oval bead, and then these two smaller beads are made by just using the top portions of the oval bead because this bead has several sections that you have to piece together. So this has three sections, this bead is made with two sections, and this is just made with the top section, but you can make several different beads from just one template, and that's how I arranged them in this pair of earrings. There's a similar style where I made them a little bit longer by putting jump rings in between. And on these earrings, I've used 20 gauge wire to kind of stack the beads instead of using cording and crimp beads. Uh, I like it better. It's just faster and funner and easier to work with, I think, and, and a little more durable. So I've kind of switched to the wire wiring the beads together rather than using string and cord and crimp beads and all of that. So this is just two different styles that you can make with the same type of beads. I also have a bead that I call my cylinder bead and it's this top bead right here. And you can make 
additional larger beads by just using more sections of that same bead. So this middle section has two strips of the cylinder bead and this bottom one has three. And the bead roller that I have only allows you to go about this big, so you can't really do any more than three strips worth of the metal. But um, if you find the cylinder bead, that's how you can just combine more strips to make larger beads. And here again, I just did a similar style, but I put the spacing in between them just for more dangly, longer, different style of uh, earring. And then I've just, these are just a few different combinations of the oval bead with some alcohol ink color. And you can stack them in different directions. So these are large to small and these are small to large. And again, just sort of a different variation. Here's one where I combined my oval bead and my little simple Cricut cut flower at the bottom for sort of a charm at the bottom. And like I said, you can see silver on one side and you get the print of the can on the other side. I do have one additional bead style that I will also link to. I'm calling it my pillow bead and it's this little puffy kind of shaped bead that's made in a completely different way. It's not rolled on the bead roller. So there's a tutorial for that as well. And you can make it in sort of this bead shape where you can string all the way through it. And you can also make it, these, these earrings are really silly, but I thought they were sort of fun. Um, you can also make it in a charm style where you don't have a hole in the bottom. So it, you can make this bead in a couple of different ways. And of course there are tons of different things that you can do with that. This is just a couple of examples. And the last couple of things I have are similar styles that I've showed you, but you can also roll the beads with the printed side out. So here I have the Coke side out and I put two charms on it so that you would see the Coca-Cola uh, coloring from both sides of the charm, but they kind of dangle and separate. If you want to see the silver, you, you get little flashes of silver. And then this set I made with the pillow beads and my rolled oblong bead, but the print side of the can is showing on the oval bead as well. So those are just some of the many earring styles that you can make from aluminum cans. Certainly you could use your own imagination, but I have a couple of bonus things for you as well. I've also made several bracelets uh, out of the oblong beads, which are just sort of fun to see all the colors. And I recently learned about memory wire, and so I've made some memory wire bracelets with my different bead styles as well. You can also use these pieces in jewelry if you want to. I haven't found as many ways to manipulate them, but they are usable to make jewelry with. I've made a couple of sort of chunky pendants, I would call them, I guess. This one is just two bottom pieces hooked together with um, some alcohol ink to color it. And then I put the ring around the outside just for a little more interest. These are just a couple more to show you how pretty the alcohol ink turns out on this bigger surface. And you can also decorate them with sequins and other beads if you want to do something like that. And lastly is the pull tabs that you can make these fun chunky kind of chains out of. So I hope this quick tour of some of my aluminum can jewelry and different techniques has given you some inspiration to try some of this jewelry making on your own from your next empty soda can. Don't forget to check all of the resources in the description box. Click the like button if you enjoyed today's video. If you haven't already, I'd love to have you join my YouTube family by clicking that subscribe button. 
If you'd like to receive the Upcycle Design Lab newsletter, check the description box for a place to sign up. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you back here soon in the lab for my next experiment.